finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict, and I'm going to wrap up this mini project with this video. Thank you so much if you've come back and watched multiple. Even if this is your first time, consider subscribing. Certainly appreciate it. And leave a comment. What I continue to see is we see our number growing here in terms of viewer minutes per month, but not everyone subscribes. So again, tap on subscribe. Now, um, I'm going to jump to this slide because it's going to basically sum it up. We're now at the top or the bottom. If you look at this slide, uh, we started at 44 K for a 62 Lincoln continental sedan. We are now up to a 66 Lincoln continental convertible that sold just North of 300,000, which arguably could be the biggest surprise this year. Again, focusing only on these 11 cars from 61 to 69. Technically, we only got up to 66, but that's the range that we try to focus on with Lincoln Attic Podcast. Again, if you haven't checked it out, um, go to lincolnattic.com or go to your favorite podcast app, even Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and search Lincoln Addict. Tap subscribe. It's free. And uh, I'll share more there, of course, as we go on. But basically, we got to 66, and this convertible as I mentioned, arguably the biggest surprise. Now, there were some surprises, as I mentioned. Um, for instance, the sedan that went for 231, very nice car. Uh, Ali's car went for 275. I thought it would go higher. And even uh, my friend Charlie, uh, really, I think arguably his car should have went for more. There were a few nuances. I think I hinted at a couple, especially with Ali's car here. I don't think I really went into any detail, but it was odd because reading some of the comments in social media, I think he got a little bit of a a bad deal because the auctioneer had changed right before. And when his car came across the block for this $275,000 car, it went uh, super quick. And I think they even went back and timed it. And it was like way less time than a lot of other people got. So arguably this, this, this car number could have crept up, but Ali knows how to play the game and he's obviously, you know, shake it off and and move on and he's ready to rock and roll with the next project. But that's just how it goes. I think some people tend to forget that this is a big gamble uh, when you're dealing with um, these, you know, high end builds or just at auctions in general. But that's enough there um, in terms of the little intro and banter. Um, I did want to jump right into this slide now, 66 Lincoln Continental Convertible. Why is it such a big surprise and how did it go for 300 plus grand? Now, of course, that's with the buyer's fee. So the hammer price was less. If you follow these cars, you know that typically the past few years, the 66 and 67 convertible, those haven't really pulled in as much money. Now, if you really break it down, I mean, you will see good sales on these cars, good sale numbers, strong sale numbers, but Oftentimes, people, for whatever reason, they gravitate more towards the 61 through 63s. There's people that love those. There's guys like me that really uh, like the 64, 65s. And believe it or not, as I've said in the past, I am a big fan of 66, 67. Uh, To me, of course, the body changed from 65 to 66. But these cars look awesome, whether they're stock. This is stock and kind of an appearance in terms of the stance. We're going to see more about that. But also when they're customized, they look fantastic. So the 66 that you see here, um, as I mentioned in the past, the easiest way to tell a 66 apart from a 67, and I always kind of categorize those two together because 66 and 67, they're, they're so alike. I mean, they're, they're, they're almost the same. But this front star, so typically it's put back on even with the restoration. This star is the tell, so to speak, that it's a 66. That's the one way. Um, The other thing that I look at is uh, the grill. So the bar count is different. That's typically not going to be something even from this angle here that you can necessarily count. I think there's 11 versus 13. And every time I count them, I'm always like, okay, I'm going to remember which one. Um, you know, there might've been 11 and 66 and then 67 is 13. It's something very close to that, but also the seats. So 
I'm a big fan of the 61 through 66 seats, although I did have a set of 67 buckets in the past. The 66 seats are identical other than the pattern uh, to the previous year. So 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 basically kind of have these um, same uh, seats where the trim goes all the way uh, across the back. And um, it did change a little bit in 67, if I recall correctly. And again, I'm thinking about a set of buckets I had. Uh, but, you know, typically those are a few things I look at uh, to tell what year uh, car it is. Now, this 66, if we go to the next slide, again, Barrett Jackson's website, this is kind of the blah of information that they give. And it's great. We want to have info. I wish it was kind of bullet pointed, but what I did is a copy paste just so you can kind of see it. And then we'll, of course, talk through it. Now, if we jump over here to the actual Barrett-Jackson site, um, a few things that are going to stand out. Uh, number one, if we look at this car, it's black, red interior, custom wheels, and a wider white wall tire, right? So number one, it's not for everyone. Totally get it, right? Not everyone likes a wide white wall tire. I know a few people that really aren't fans of them. Um, black is very appealing, red interior, great choice. You know, you'll often see black on black or in this case, black and red, uh, obviously, uh, custom wheel and tire combo. And you can't really see from here, like, Hey, is it just lowered? Is it static drop? Is it just a bigger wheel? So we'll jump into that. Here's the rear three quarter shot. And, um, you know, again, if we look at some of the gapping and spacing here, this all kind of looks good with the rear bumper. Deck lid looks good. Paint looks good. Again, black paint, not the easiest to maintain. I'll always reinforce that. A big draw to this car is going to be the engine in the engine bay. Um, not only that, but the front clip on the car. So the front clip, typically, whether you're building a car or truck, that's typically what's going to be, you know, from the firewall forward. So in a lot of older cars, if there's a subframe, uh, there'll be like a whole new clip, kind of more modern, put on the front. You'll see a lot of the truck guys, they'll you know, cut the frame off sometimes at the firewall and build something or graft on something. And that's basically what was done here. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. Something that um, oftentimes people uh, will will zone in feedback on these custom Lincolns is they'll go, oh, why did they put a Chevy motor? Totally get it. This one has a Ford Coyote motor. So that's going to help bring um, a little bit more money on the car. We could see here the interior looks really, really good. Um, we also see that it has decoded digital aftermarket gauges. It has an aftermarket radio, and uh, it's got the AccuWare I can see right here, uh, the little touchpad that allows you to hit one, two, or three as far as your different drive heights. We can see in here inside the door jam looks good. Uh, obviously, this car has been repainted at some point. Um, interior, again, looks really, really good um, so far what we're seeing. Rear three quarter shot, uh, top down, really reinforces like this is a car that you just really want to get in, put the top down, start the engine and cruise. You can see here the stock column. I do believe, I believe this is the tilt column. I'm pretty certain, 99.9%. Uh, 66 and 67, you could get tilt column. Uh, folks have reminded me, I thought GM made it in both 66 and 67. I believe I've stood corrected on this. And TC, um, my friend TC, she has also reinforced the same that some of the viewers have. 66 and 67 columns are different. Um, so chime in if you got more information there. But I know some people have helped in the past. But bottom line is 66 I want to say it was the GM column and 67 was the Ford, but um, you have a tilt column and this is going to be a very similar um, tilt that you would have like in a, uh, like a truck that has tilt column. Uh, I say that because remember 64, 65 uh, has tilt column option, very rare, about 10% of the cars and it was vacuum operated. So this is more of like your standard style tilt that uh, you may have been accustomed to growing up and driving. Here we can see the AccuWare controller. This E-level touchpad has been around for many years, uh, probably 10 plus. Um, I was looking back at some old magazines and I think even some of the advertisements from 2012. So this 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 is a try and true product. 
Um, they've mounted it in here kind of sideways that you'll sometimes see where they'll mount it in the ashtray. Uh, but bottom line is typically this is going to be um, more of a portrait mounted um, device. It doesn't really matter, but you know, if you can visualize it being up and down, uh, you've got two typically is your drive height. You hit three if you've got it, um, if you want to raise the car up a little bit more, or number one is kind of your low cruise the strip setting. And uh, of course, you can manually tap the front up, front down, rear up, rear down, or these are individual controls. So, you know, with the modernization of the E level, which stands for like electronic leveling. Uh, typically, you're not having to tap all these individuals, but um, you know, certainly, if you were wanting to, you could. Uh, we've seen people take the cigarette lighter here and convert this. This has been done in my '65 by the previous owner. Uh, it's pretty cool because then, at this point, especially if you don't smoke, uh, you can easily get in here and plug in USB C or USB uh, plugs, charging your phone and whatnot. If I remember correctly i'm trying to remember what i know in the sedans there is a vacuum release option in here um i forget if what the option is here um but uh, you guys can chime in with that so you can see the custom interior here on the door panels uh the switches look good i, I can't remember the i want to say that these aren't uh, in my 67 that I had, I know the switches looked a little bit different, but even if these aren't the factory switches, to me, these look good. Another shot there of the E-Level. You can see the gas pedal. I often talk about if you look at the gas pedal, the throttle pedal, um, it'll give you a little bit of insight to how worn or how many miles are on a car. You never tell specifically, but you know if a car showed that it had 10,000 miles and you were wondering if it had rolled over in terms of the, the odometer, you can often look and see how worn the pedal is. Of course, it could be swapped. I mean, there's all of that in play, uh, but this one certainly doesn't look too, too bad. You can see here the door panel. I've mentioned in the past these little uh, push on, they kind of snap in. Those are getting harder to find. So I always look to see do they have those. Uh, we've seen some missing in some of the reviews we've done. Here we can see the speaker pods under the rear seats. And again, 66, you guys could chime in. I'm pretty certain they changed the seats a little bit in 67. But if you look at this trim piece, it's the same in, uh, in all the years uh, prior. Uh, we can also see that it has the factory 66 seat belts. Um, so that's a cool thing. Kind of becoming more rare. Um, uh, you can see the kick panels here. These were factory as well, and they've got the little vent deals. Uh, I like to look and you know see, does it have everything in this car? I mean, to me, it looks complete. So the front setup, we'll look at um, something here now. Basically, what you have is the original engine was swapped out. It's now powered by a Ford 5.0 Coyote V8. Uh, I believe the Coyote just comes in the Mustang, but some of the Ford guys can kind of chime in. Uh, TIG welded stainless steel exhaust and matted to a 6R80 six-speed automatic transmission, which I'm sure, uh, you know, with this engine set up, this car really gets after it, so to speak. The original front frame and suspension were removed replaced with a new professionally built frame rail system, which uses a modern independent front cross member with a rack and pinion steering. The rear suspension is fitted with a chopping block four link system for bags, of course, AccuAir Bluetooth controller. We'll see more on that. And shout out to Michael and team at Colorado Custom. These are Colorado Custom wheels. These are 18s with Diamondback tires. Ironically enough, on my car, I've got 17-inch wheels with Diamondback tires and love that setup. Now, the reason why I wanted to stop there is I did want to just kind of reinforce that this setup on this car is often, you know, people oftentimes, especially like guys that maybe haven't had a hot rod or, you know, maybe they're getting to a point in their life that they can afford something and they want something modern. They they want something old school. They want something that's not going to break down. And I'll often hear people say, well, you know, I want the old school look, but I want the new school technology. And that's really what you're getting here. You're getting the newer trans and um, motor engine. You're also getting that front setup. So do you really have to do that? Not necessarily. I mean, certainly you could put the Coyote motor in a stock Lincoln. I mean, it happens all the time. Uh, it's happening more and more, I should say. But 
Um, you're going to have some guys that are going to go, hey, listen, if we're going to do it, we'll just put the whole front setup on it. We'll put modern steering and things like that. This car obviously is going to have the looks of the old school. It's going to have, you know, a lot of power. Um, it's going to probably drive more like a modern car. And that's maybe what some people want. And the price here uh, certainly reinforces that's what this individual wanted. Uh, if we get back to where we were at again, uh, that's why a setup like this, the other benefit to it is hypothetically, let's say you needed to have some work done. You know, you could take this to more than likely a local mechanic or someone that could do some things to it. Now, granted, not everybody wants to work on full custom stuff like this, but it's, you know, if you live in the middle of Idaho and you don't have a Lincoln expert near you that wants to touch, you know, a hydromatic trans, uh, certainly you could find a trend shop that rebuild this transmission if you ever had to. So that's the point that I'm making here. You can see, um, just a little bit more zoomed in of the valve covers. Pretty cool. They put continental nice little touch across them. Um, here is going to be the front. So you can see the hood hinge right here. Uh, so the little cover that was made, you got some billet, um, uh, pieces, uh, that are there and you've got your intake system. Uh, this is in the trunk, so you've got two Vier. I believe these are three thirty C. So um, Vier has been a, a name brand for twenty plus years in the air suspension world, and what you end up he having here is a lot of Lincoln uh, enthusiasts or people that are building these cars. I love this setup. I had a sixty seven sedan with a similar setup, although mine was up on the package tray area. You end up having here the Accuware tank. You have their XO mount where you have these two mounts, and then you have the one in the middle. Uh, the two on the ex uh, on the exterior uh, are for these via air compressor mounts. You have this one in the middle that's for the – this is called the VU4. If you want to know more about air suspension, you can look back on my channel. I've done a full series, maybe six-ish episodes talking about what I went with uh, on my car. And I talk about AccuWare products because that's what I chose. And uh, this setup is uh, pretty pretty true. Um, they sold these for a while. Uh, it's kind of hard to find these XO mounts, although AccuWare is selling a very similar setup now. Uh, they have a couple of other companies make these different mounts for them. But you can also see here it has the ECU Plus. So this is the newer brain or ECU, if you will. And this allows for you to control the air suspension from your phone, believe it or not. So let's say you were coming out of a restaurant and your cell phone was still connected uh, to the AccuWear ECU. Uh, let's say it hadn't disconnected, if you will. You could tap it and then the car uh, would raise up you know, to your drive height as an example. Uh, these are the little mufflers that come out of here to kind of silence uh, when you're letting the air out of the system. Um, and you've got some hard line, uh, more than likely aluminum, which is what I've run in the past, uh, possibly stainless, but uh, it looks like aluminum bent lines there. So nice little um, setup here. This is in the trunk. So back here on this side is where um, the deck lid would be opened up. This would be on the other side of this is where the gas tank is at. And of course, this is mounted down in the wheel well area where the typical spare tire would go. Uh, and here's a better photo to kind of showcase that. Uh, they've added these little guys here, I think, more for aesthetics than anything. And if you are new to the channel or you may not recall... I talk about John Cashman always mentions this bar that has to be installed. That's on 6465 specific. In 66, as John has mentioned, they uh, Ford Motor Company, Lincoln Motor Company, if you will, they had corrected this defect by installing this. You can see this is pretty stout. This bar um, keeps these cast pieces from forever um, from ever folding in on themselves or. Um, Breaking, if you will, it kind of adds some rigidity. Uh, here, the you got these little feet. These are factory. Sometimes people will ask. Those are factory little pads where the top, as it um, comes back and sits in the trunk, it kind of rests on those one on each side. Here's an aftermarket radio that's installed in the factory spot. You see the top. And here you get a little bit of insight into, um, I like to look and see, uh, how does all of this look? You know, is the stainless, ha has someone taken it off? Has it been, I mean, this doesn't look polished here. Um, 
it, it could just be the angle. But, you know, if I'm going to be spending a lot of money on a car, you know, I'd, I'd like for someone to have, you know, debadged the car, taken all the, the, the trim off and done some of that. Um, with some of this stuff being pot metal, especially this mirror, uh, this mirror looks really good. It's hard to tell if this was a, a repop mirror or if they sent it in. A lot of places don't chrome pot metal. And um, so you can't always get that stuff redone depending on, you know, you go to a different place. But uh, this mirror basically looks pretty good. Here we can see some of the, the gapping and uh, we see this uh, 66 lens here everything looks good um there is a um, little piece that goes behind here if i recall correctly uh, i can't really tell if it's missing or anything like that but uh looks pretty good overall here we can see the wide white wall tire uh, these can obviously be cleaned off and i did a video actually how to install these caps uh, billet wheel companies have been using these caps for a long time to conceal the lug nuts but also, um, there's no screw, and I know some people have a hard time understanding how these can stay on, but if you watch the other video, there's an O-ring back here, and these things will not come off. They're pretty tough to get off as well. There is a tool that you can use, but uh, these are made from Colorado Custom, and uh, Michael and team, uh, best in the business. Here you could see some sort of upgrade um, auto electric and um, this is going to be for someone that wants to maybe upgrade their top and not deal with those old school relays that often get a bad rap. Um, I am not a component to swapping all this unless really someone's butchered up the existing stuff. Maybe a car's been sitting outside a long time and a lot of stuff is bad. You often don't have to really change all this stuff. You know, typically there's a switch that's bad. There's one relay. And if that's all that you have to fix, I mean, that's usually pretty, um, cost effective to, to fix one thing. But certainly if someone's taken the time and money and they've upgraded some of this, as Nathan Wilson has done in the past with his setups that he builds, it's pro you know it's probably not a bad thing. So I enjoy seeing people do this. Again, I just don't think it's a necessity, um, but this might make it easier for someone uh, that doesn't know how to fix something right if they're stuck. Here we could see the front setup, and typically this is going to be all just removed from another car, and it's installed here and. Um, what you pretty much see is uh, everything's more modern. It's all newer type stuff. Here's the Dakota digital gauges. Uh, the cool thing about these is they finally started making them for 66 and 67. Uh, I guess for 68 as well, but 68 didn't have the convertible. Um, you basically um, bolt this in and then you've got the newer sensors that are going to go to your engine. That's going to be key for someone that's doing a motor swap because now they're able to, you know, to, to, to not have to worry about, the um the older gauges with the newer engine right this stuff is just going to work plug and play for the most part uh here we can see the new exhaust which is done everything looks really nice and kind of clean and painted up underneath here you can see some of the Acura sensors right here that's what tells the system where the car is at you can see the uh, suspensions all nice and painted black for the most part nothing sticking out here uh, pretty nice car. Now, when you first see this photo, you're probably scratching your head going, okay, what is this? And this is obviously, again, back at the front. You can see the airbag in here, the airline. Uh, this is a push-to-connect fitting, so you basically kind of push this down with your two fingers, and that airline goes right in, and then you kind of pull up on it. it. makes it really easy to get the airline in and out um, when you're installing it. But everything in here looks pretty, you know, pretty good. I mean, this is a big modification job. So uh, you could always make this stuff look nicer if you wanted. But typically, nobody's going to really get up underneath these cars and look at them. You're going to cruise them. But that's all that we see. Um, I do want to jump down here again. 18-inch wheels. The red interior finish is um, torch red leather, keeping the factory look. Uh, it features the original factory tilt steering, which uh, we covered earlier. The radio is push-button AM, FM, retro sound, Dakota digital gauges. The interior, uh, kind of the original interior styling was kept. 
uh, the original air conditioning box has been modified with modern day internal components. It's controlled by a custom electronic module, which controls little electric actuators, which is cool. Again, somebody that's going to buy this car, that's got the money, they're going to want to cruise and not have issues. And um, arguably, you can do that with an old school car as well. But there's always going to be a market for this kind of stuff. The convertible top is new black. Stay fast. Again, you'll continue to see uh, that term canvas. So stay fast canvas. Uh, of course, 66, 67 does have a glass rear window, um, and it has a modern style relay system, uh, which we talked about. So this one, what's the significance of Friday? Uh, typically Friday or Saturday, I believe they pay more money for those different peak times for the car to go across the auction. You can imagine that would be key for someone trying to sell uh, their car. 302 grand. Do you guys think it's worth that? Okay. Um, I look at it and say this oftentimes when I post stuff, you know, people say, you know, these, these, you know, custom cars, they're not going to bring the money. Uh, they're better original. What we have seen the past three, four five plus years, the resto mod cars are bringing more money than a stock car. Okay. Not always, right? Not always, but certainly often enough, okay? And something like this that it was appealing to someone, it's a 66, red interior, black paint, modern engine, modern front clip, air suspension, modern sound system. Somebody that's got the money, um, someone's going to kind of cash in on this, okay? And that's what they did. Now, someone had mentioned everything was disassembled. I kind of skipped through this earlier, and I think they said somewhere – that I could have swore I read somewhere that it said that this was an abandoned project. Uh, the restoration modification history started in 2016 with the previous owner who was unable to complete the project. This was acquired by the current owner in 2020, and then they finished it. So, you know, probably got a decent deal on it, maybe, depending on, you know, the parts and all that stuff. They they finalized it, and then they were able to cash out at 300 grand. 66, 67, they're continuing to bring solid numbers. Uh, I love stock Lincolns. I love custom Lincolns. I'm curious what you guys think. Did you ever think 300 grand for a 66, 67? I don't know. Uh, we saw cars that had more work in them, arguably, maybe with not a Ford power plant go for less money. So I think the win-win recipe here is black, a little bit custom, the good, nice, old school look on the outside, and you know maybe a Ford power plant, maybe air suspension, things like that. Um, when we look back at the presentation, and we go back and we look at the difference between Ollie's car two seventy five and this car, I think Ollie's car is more appealing to most people, right? It's blue, right? Which you know maybe held some people back. Um, it's got a GM. I think he had a GM engine in that one versus this one had a Ford. You know, twenty five, twenty seven thousand dollar difference. Um, I really think all these cars could have brought a lot more. I wish that it had, but I think this car was appealing because of the colors and the uniqueness of the front clip being swapped out, airbagged. All these car wasn't so. There's a few things. Again, you can find that perfect um, balance, and you can see where that could drive a sale. So we had these 11 cars. I had to double-check this. 1.7446, so $1,744,600, if you can believe it. That brings, I think, the average when I did it was 158 k per sale, right? So that's average. So obviously you had some below that. You had one, two, three, four, five cars above that, which brought it to that average. But let me know what you guys think. I appreciate the support. Check out LincolnAttic.com if you want to uh, buy a sticker. Uh, I do have a few t-shirts left. You can pick one of those up. Leave a comment and certainly stay on the rise, as we always say. And we'll hit you guys soon with more content from Lincoln Addict. Stay tuned. We out of here. Peace.